Thank you, Adam. You're looking great in the studio. Those clouds going behind you in that beautiful blue sky. Okay, we're excited here at the FIDA in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress 21. Yes, it's on. Yes, it's alive. And I'd say it's pretty well. Andre Zelenko is here. He's the CEO of Porta, Porta One. And Roman Kalinkov is joining us as well. He's the Chief Commercial Officer of Porta One. Gents, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you very much for having us. You're very welcome. You guys are local Barcelonans now. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Coming, you know, came in from Russia. You, you had this great idea for a company. Tell us about Porta One. Mm -hmm. Well, Porta One exists for over 20 years, mm -hmm. and we focus on helping telco operators to deliver services more efficiently or create something new by providing an open architecture platform. And uh, we mostly focus on tier two and three operators. So I think about us as this weapon they can use to fight the Goliaths, the large telecom operators, because they need flexibility and they need ability to get there faster. I mean, I love that, right? Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, we're going to talk about the cloud mm -hmm. is a key part of that because you're now giving the, the smaller operators the capabilities that mm -hmm. the big guys have, have had, but mm -hmm. actually doing it in a way that may be cleaner, more agile, it's cloud-based, they can price differently, it's a whole mm -hmm. new ball game, right? I mean. What are you seeing when you talk to customers? What's that? What's the initial conversation like? Well, people still, to some extent, are afraid of the cloud, but we try to give them different options. On premises or in the cloud, it's a software, after all. Yes. What, what are they afraid of with the cloud? They're afraid of not having a full control. And usually people are afraid of things which they don't completely understand. And I guess, having us here helps them to overcome that fear. Well, we saw this with the you know, traditional enterprise IT. When we used to have financial services executives on theCUBE, you know, 10 years ago, they go, we will never put our data in the cloud. It's never going to happen. Of course, financial services is one of the fastest growing and, and largest customer segments for, for the cloud. Um, but, but you're focusing on, you say, the, the tier two and tier three. I would think they have a greater motivation Right, because they see the opportunity to disrupt, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's true. I see cloud and other technologies such as SDN as this great equalizer, because now it doesn't matter that much how much of a fiber optics you have in the ground or how many base towers you have. The true advantage will come from your platform, from the applications and the service you can create. And if as a company they can create a great service, if it's in the cloud, it can scale to millions of subscribers easily. They just need to find a product market fit. Now Roman, you've got almost 500 customers, I believe. Yes, all around the globe. Well, that's the interesting thing. You have like 90 customers or more. And so... 90 countries. No, it's not 90 countries, I meant. 500 customers, 90 countries. So you've got local laws, you've got local politics, public policy different across those, those countries. Um, you know, provenance, et cetera, et cetera. How do you see, what's the spectrum like? Um, are they open to the tier two and tier three disrupting? I mean, I would imagine some countries are trying to protect, you know, their relationships with the big telcos because it's such critical infrastructure. What's that spectrum look like? Paint a picture of that it, diversity. It all depends on specific country. Uh, in some countries, like South Africa, the market is totally liberalized. We want to become a telco, here you go. In other countries like China, for example, it's only for uh, a very small group of national carriers. So we basically follow the lead of, uh, of the customers. If there are an opportunity in specific countries, they will pop up like mushrooms. If there is no market liberation, what can you do? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now talk more about what you guys sell to these customers. It's, it's, you're talking about the, the BSS systems, um, and, and what exactly am I, am I buying from you, and how does that all work? Um, we sell the ability to manage your subscribers, create new services, and then provision and deliver those services to a variety of network elements, uh, equipment, and uh, through integrations and through connections to various types of apps. And uh, right now with the cloud move, I see this as an, it's, it's a challenge <clears throat> and an opportunity at the same time. 
if for Telco who has existing infrastructure, that's their chance to rethink the architecture and approach. Because if they just think, okay, well, cloud, it's some kind of computer where I'm going to run my applications a bit cheaper, they're missing the point. Uh, we were born in the Soviet Union, and one of my treasures is the jokes from Soviet Union times. So one of them is a lady writes to the Central Committee of Communistic Party, and she says, I work at the Moscow teapot factory, and I like my job, I like my colleagues, I'm employee of the month, but what bothers me, I can never buy a teapot in my store. I go there, they, they never have teapots. Can you do something? And she receives a reply saying, well, we cannot change the way how we distribute goods in the whole country. But as an exception, we allow you to take one part of teapot, bring it home, and you can assemble teapot for yourself. And then two months later, there's another letter from the same lady saying, dear comrades, I did as you told me. <laughs> and now in my backyard, I have an intercontinental ballistic missile SS-20, but I still don't have a teapot. <laughs> so you cannot replicate what you already had and just like bring it piece by piece into the cloud and expect it's going to be something different, it's going to be, uh, to be better. <laughs> we call it the lunar landing module. <laughs> Very complex. Okay, let's talk about the move from, and the journey from, from on-prem, maybe through hybrid, mm -hmm. but to the cloud ultimately. And, mm -hmm. and it starts with the customer conversation. First of all, they got to be willing, right? Okay, but what's that journey look like? What are the phases that we should, how should we think about mm -hmm. that? Um, over the last 20 years, uh, we've been offering uh, our platform on premises. And usually with unlimited license. So whatever you can squeeze out of your physical machines is all yours, we don't count that. And that was a pretty straightforward model because you own your servers, we give you the license to the product, and it's fully separated. In the cloud, it's not possible by default. You provide both the physical infrastructure and software infrastructure. So we need to change that model, and we need to explain it to our customers first of all. The next step. No telco is the same. So they provide different set of services. They uh, offer their products to different audiences of, uh, of, the, uh, of the end users. So it can be hosted IP PBX or IP centrics environments. So we would then price our uh, platform based on the number of active seats. Or it can be a mobile operator. Uh, full mobile network operator or virtual mobile operator MVNO or even uh, enabler MVNE. So in that case we would price our platform based on number of active SIMs. Many, many of our customers prefer to diversify. They want to choose different models, serve different market segments and not only deliver voice but also data, messaging, value-added services. We have a huge customer in Brazil, for example. They don't have a single end-user customer because everything what they do is pure IoT. So how do you price the platform? Because the variety of business models is so huge. We use uh, the idea of billable events. So any call, any message, any data session, subscription, or anything which can produce a rateable file can counter against the capacity uh, of what the customer uses. So it gives a full transparency, uh, transparency for the customer and it's easy to predict the future costs. And you're able to charge uh, accordingly and transparently because you've written software to do that Absolutely. in the cloud, mm -hmm. I presume, mm -hmm. and so you're, you're, you're able to show your customer that this is exactly what you're paying for. And a seat in that instance is somebody who's creating those services or somebody who's administering those services or it's a developer? It's an extension. Uh, uh, somebody so who's using the service, so the end user. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. And actually, we use our own software to charge our customers for using our software. It's uh, Okay, so you <laughs> eat your own dog food or drink <laughs> your own champagne, as people like yeah. to say, right? How about from an engineering standpoint, going from on-prem to the cloud. How should we think about architecting that? What are some of the roadblocks that we potentially see? Uh, the biggest roadblock we see in the developing countries, it's data centers not being available yet. Uh, 
that customer in Brazil, they were like knocking on the doors of a data center at 9 a.m. when it just opened because they've been waiting for so long. Uh, we have about 15 customers in South Africa. They still are waiting for proper cloud data center to be open there. But that's just a question of time. We just have to wait a little bit and uh, this will get improved. And then that's a big thing. Okay, you have your data center, you have your cloud software, and then you have your existing operations, you have your systems, so how do you move there? And uh, I'm a proponent of gradual migration and gradual movement because every telco, if they were in business for at least three years, they have accumulated a variety of different systems, legacy, different products, different departments. It's difficult to jump in the cloud in one jump. So let's build a ladder. And with our customers, we use a technology called dual version. This idea is it's a gradual migration. You don't move it at once. You first put a pilot batch of customers, observe them, then add more customers, add more customers, and you keep going until everybody is on the new version. And it helps tremendously with new technology or just with a different user experience because maybe some things which were improved in our perspective. From some users, they don't like the change or they need some adjustments. So we see a way to the cloud. It's uh, starting with small steps and then getting to the cloud. And the process doesn't start there because once you get to version one of your cloud software, there's going to be version two and version three and version four. So the first is agile change in the mentality of telco. All this constant gradual improvements. You call gradual? Gradual? What gradual, gradual. Gradual, yeah, okay, yeah. so gradual migration. Mm -hmm. So when you do a migration, and it's gradual, what do you do, create a, some kind of abstraction layer so I don't have to freeze everything, right? Uh, or, or maybe I do freeze it, but I can still operate with the, the pieces that have moved. Exactly. Right? So I'm not shutting down my business. No, that's the problem no with, way, no That's way. the problem with migrations, yeah. right? Yes. I, gotta, I gotta freeze it, and then I, so I say, forget it, I don't I'm gonna mm -hmm. ever do a migration, but technology allows you to hide that. That right. Uh, some freeze may be required because maybe you should not add a new product or change one which is currently being migrated. Right. But we're trying to minimize the amount of those freezes from a product catalog perspective and the amount of potential inconveniences for the end user when they while well, they're being migrated. Let's talk about the business value. We, we know the before. We know what it's like. It's a hairball, you described that mm. spaghetti code. Mm. It's, uh, it's, mm. it's slow, it's mm. not transparent, it's expensive. Mm. What, what are you seeing in the, in the after state with some of your tier two and tier three customers, in particular mm. the ones that are disrupting the mm. big telcos? What do you see, Roman? Um, it brings value, first of all, because the scalability is no longer an issue. The ability to migrate ability to update the system to the new releases is also much more easier in the cloud. So the industry is changing fast. The consumers are instantly moving from one preferred way of communicating to another. So the telcos need to, uh, to change as well pretty rapidly. So we are trying to give them that, uh, that set of tools so they are not being dragged behind uh, by the changes. So update faster, scale faster, introduce new products uh, faster, configure new subscription, and get more customers. And then that leads to com compressed time to monetization. Exactly. Better customer satisfaction. And we talked in this industry about NPS and, and how it's so negative. Usually people talk about, ah, my NPS is better than Apple's. In, the, in this industry, it's like, we need to improve the NPS. Right? It's kind of a unique approach. Okay, guys, we're almost out of time. Andrea, I'll give you the last word. Put a bow on, uh, on, on Mobile World Congress 2021 and, and how Porta sees it. Well, uh, I think it's very symbolic, this place we are in right now. It's a space which used to belong to a large telecom software vendor, and now there's a variety of smaller disruptive companies, and I think that's the future. So the days when a telco would shop for a single huge RFP to solve all of their problems are gone for good, because now with the cloud, with integration, with API, you, the telcos, have the power to build what they need, to pick the solutions, to integrate, and create something which will deliver value and allow them to have a unique and fantastic offer. 
We are tracking the transformation of telco, and it, and it just coincides with the post-isolation, exit of the post-isolation economy. We're really excited the Cube be here in Cloud City. Adam, back to you in the studio.